Oh, shit. When you have a small machine with a limited work envelope, one of the most frustrating things can be to try to figure out how to get everything to fit on the table, especially when you go to adding things like a tool setter. Now, a tool setter is fantastic and it makes things really simple, but it can get in the way when you have a machine like this with a small work envelope. So wouldn't it be super nice if we could just take this tool setter and make it removable so we can add it on when we want it and take it off when we don't? Well, that's what I'm gonna to try to solve today. But there's gonna be one big stipulation of this. It's gotta repeat. We've gotta be able to put this on every time and it hit that same location every single time. So I'm gonna make something that can make this tool setter removable, be able to put it on when I need it, take it off when I don't. So I've modeled up our table of our X7 and I've went ahead and modeled in some grooves that represent the axis limits. So that's like the Sharpie marks that you see on our table. And I've put in the tool setter in the exact location that's sitting on the table now. So you can see that it's inside of my work envelope and taking up a lot of space. Some of you may even have a fourth axis rotary on your table and a vise on the other side. But as you can see with where my tool setter is currently mounted, we're really running out of room here. So what I've come up with is this right here. And if I explode this out, now we've got this piece that will mount directly to the table. So that's gonna be the only piece that's gonna stay in the exact location. So I've added these angled faces that's gonna locate our tool setter in both X and Y. Now the top piece it's going to bolt directly to our tool setter and that piece is going to have the same faces on the top and it's also going to have these magnets here that's going to help hold it into place so if i put all this together you can see how it's going to mount here and this top piece will just come on and off so what does this look like on the table i'm going to show my new assembly and let's go ahead and make this other one transparent so now I can see this new assembly mounted to the table and I'm actually able to shift it over to where the bottom plate is just outside of our axis limit so it's completely out of the way. And we're also going to gain a little bit of height there. But you see the difference of where it's sitting versus where we're currently sitting. But more importantly than that, I'll actually be able to take this on and off so it'll be completely out of the way. Now I go over to our full assembly here now, if I move this vise over, I actually got a lot more room now. So even if I put the vise all the way on the axis limit, I'll still see that it can interfere with my tool setter, but I can remove this and it doesn't have to be there. Now with my vise mounted here, I won't be able to put it back on to actually touch tools off, but at least it would be completely out of the way if I absolutely had to have my vise sitting in this location. So in theory, everything's looking great here in the digital world, but is it going to work out in real life? Well, let's go make one and find out. We're going to be making these parts on our Sile X5. And in case you didn't know, we are the national distributor for these machines. Go to our website at timesofcnc.com and reach out to Keith if you're interested in getting one of these machines yourself. So on a machine like this, the Heimer 3D Taster is the perfect solution for finding your work offsets. So we just taught our work offset there. And you can even see this machine is even more exaggerated with your tool setter where how you don't have very much room here. So I actually had to shift this whole assembly forward in order to get a little bit more clearance between my vise and my tool setter. And by the way, these are on sale on our store right now. Making this removable mount, if it works, is going to be great to have on a machine like this. So, let's get to running.
So that's a 3 8 six fluid end mill running about 134 inches a minute. Man, end mills with chip flares, just the way to go. That dude is just blowing those chips out. So that's op one on the base plate. So let's get in there and see how it looks. And I'm gonna set up a vice stop and go ahead and run our next two parts since it's the same material. Man, that came out super nice. So people's been wondering what kind of finishes you can get on the X5 and the X7. And I think this is a good testimony of what you can achieve because this is heat treated 4140. This is not just aluminum, you know, it's, it's some real deal steel. You like that? <laughs> off about 50 thousandths per pass with this two inch face mill and there's something i wanted to mention to you right here is when you have a machine that doesn't have a whole lot of power then something like the dodeca which is a 45 degree face mill can really help you out because a 45 degree tool is free cutting and it's because it has a positive lead angle so it does like a chip thinning action now another thing that's helping us out is we're using Kinemetal's new high positive inserts. Now those high positive inserts are even more free cutting, so it's gonna reduce the amount of power that you need even more. So it's just a little tip for when you have a machine like this that doesn't have a lot of power. The part that we're making now is one that I didn't show you on the computer. So this one is gonna be the mount that's gonna allow us to move our tool setter wherever we want inside our machine. So since these tool setters are wired, we can't actually take them out. So what I'm making now is a little mount to be able to go on the side of the machine to be able to put that tool setter wherever we want. So what you're seeing it rough out now, that's gonna be the holes for the magnets to sit inside. So now we're gonna come in and shant for everything and then we're gonna see if this machine can pull a 12 millimeter tap. So as you know, taps can take a lot of torque to be able to run and this is a, almost a half inch tap. So I'm really curious to see if this machine is gonna be able to pull this tap in heat treated 4140. Like, I don't know if they even make this tapping fluid anymore. Like, Titan even said that this is like 15 years old. <laughs> so, <clears throat> this is gonna be kind of janky because I don't have anything to, let me get a cup. My knife is dull. One day I'll tell you how to butcher a deer, Tyler. And I'll probably have a sharper knife. You wanna pour, pour this stuff in that? I've been saving this for years, since I was 12 years old. <laughs> I'm gonna put 
a lot on there. And we're done. Let's do it. Boom! Check this out. Little chippy chips. No problem. That was pretty nerve wracking. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I do not like to tap. I always thread mill everything. But for the sake of this video, I wanted to see if the X5 was able to pull this size tap. And I know you guys wanted to as well. And not surprisingly, it done very well with it. Which is why we became the national distributor for these machines. Right in. You need to take it out. So op one is done on all three parts and we're ready for op two. And I've got these straight jaws here that we're gonna change out to because I don't wanna hold with these serrated jaws. So we're gonna change them out now. So on these parallels, since I got such a big chamfer around the outside of this part, you know, my parallel is only like three millimeters thick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of these shorter ones. I'm just gonna put this behind this parallel to extend it out a little bit for my jaw. And these shunk parallels are pretty cool because they got the little magnets on the back. So I know that they're gonna be located every time. 25 and 27. So before I put this in the vise, I need to touch my Z off first. And I'm gonna do that with a one, two, three block in my vise. That way it comes off this bottom and I don't have to touch off on this raw stock, take a cut, measure it, move it down and all that. So I'm just gonna to touch off on this one, two, three block first. Make sure everything's flat. Now I can call my Heimer 3D Taster up, touch off on the top. I got that zeroed. So now my zero is on the top of that one, two, three block. I'm gonna shift it down one inch. Now I'm just gonna shift it back up 925. Obviously I could have touched that off and said minus 75 thousandths and that would have been right. But I like to keep things as simple as possible, knowing that I ain't gotta do any math that could create some user error and completely eliminate that from the scenario. So, all right, now we can take this one, two, three block out, put our part in and touch off X and Y. And we'll take our base plate, get ready to flip it upside down. And it doesn't matter which direction I put it in because it's completely symmetrical. Parallels are tight, so I know it's sitting flat. So again, I got this hat of material going all the way around the outside. So I'm not gonna be able to touch my machine walls from op one unless I get rid of that hat first. 
So that's why I drilled all the way through the material so I could just use that hole to touch off my X and Y. Let's say X, half, this. All right, we're ready to rock. All right, so we're shooting for 556 on our width here because I checked the T-slots on the X7 and a 556 pin fit really well in the T-slot. Right, 556, right on it, so. I think that's good. So we're gonna take this one out, start on our second part. So we got all three parts finished. We got the base plate that's gonna be mounted to the table. We got a removable plate. This is gonna be the one that goes up against the wall for when we take our mount off. And then we got the top plate that's gonna be mounted to the tool setter itself. Now let's see how these actually fit. So the idea is that, that these angles here are gonna be what locates it every time, just like that. If I put it together, I don't feel any movement back and forth pressing on the top just to see if back if it has any like bounce side to side so that's going to tell me if the material is like warped or anything like that and i don't really feel anything so to get a super accurate measurement i'd have to put this on the height gauge and maybe measure it with an indicator but i don't feel any movement whatsoever so i think this is going to work out really well so the only thing to do now is to go ahead and install our magnets then we can take our tool setter off the table and get everything put together. So on the back side of our movable plate, I put a larger magnet. That way, when this thing has a little bit more weight on it, it won't slide down the panels. So we're gonna go install that magnet. Just like that. And as you can see, I put these little cutouts here. So if they get broken or whatever, we can just go right inside and flip them out, replace them. So, so there's our four magnets installed on our movable plate. I also went ahead and put this threaded hole in here. This is the same thread as I put in the top plate because I figured that when this thing is mounted onto the machine, it's gonna be kind of difficult to get it off because there's not really much to hold on to. And these magnets are gonna be pretty strong. The idea behind this is to put a bolt in there, kind of a long bolt so you actually can pry it off the machine. So it'll be easy to remove. 
All right, so now our top plate. So on these, I put a little bit smaller magnet because I ran out of room because of the design of the locating surfaces. Just fit right in. And now it's assembled. So now all we gotta do is take our tool setter off the machine, get it mounted to this plate, and then mount our base plate to the table wherever we want it located. So now that the magnets are installed, now if we check our fit, it just kind of snaps into place. And it's actually got a very good hold here. So we don't need it to hold a whole lot. Like all that matters is that it's holding pretty well because you're not gonna have any real pressure on your tool setter. So let's go to the machine. All right, so our base plate, I just set it on the table. And as you can see, a little bit of an imprint of where the probe was at originally, which is pretty good ways over into our travel. So this one, I'm actually gonna put it right over to the edge of where our travel is. So that, that way we get the maximum amount of table space without violating that work envelope. Go ahead and tighten it up on our table. All right, now we need to get this piece mounted to our top plate. Now, before I mount this together, I did go ahead and get my Tyrolet machining stone and stone the top of this to make sure it's completely flat with no burrs. By the way, those are in stock on our store. So now we can just set this on top. Center it up here. So I'm just gonna set it back in here. Now I'm just putting it back in the vise that way I have something to hold on to these flats so I can tighten my bolt a little bit more to make sure it doesn't loosen up at all. All right, we set it on top. You see it just locks right into place, no movement. So now we're going to mount the tool setter back on. And all right, so now all the bolts are tight. The last thing we need to do is check the top with an indicator to make sure that this is perfectly flat. If not, we've got our adjustment screws here to make it flat, and then we can check for repeatability. So let's get an indicator put in the spindle and check for flatness now. All right, so I've ran the indicator across the top in both X and Y, and I was within a tenth both directions. So I think that's gonna be good. And now I've got it zeroed on the top and if you see, now if I run my indicator across the top here, you'll see it goes to zero. And I'm just gonna do that back and forth, off and on, and you can see it goes to zero every time. So now let's check it if it repeats. Every time I take this tool setter off, put it back on, is it gonna go to zero every time? Take it off, put it back on. Right on zero. Now that's a tenth indicator. So let's check it again. Take it off, put it on. I'm within a tenth. Take it off, put it on. 
within that 10. So I want to note that I'm just I'm just setting it on. I'm not like really trying to be careful with it or anything like that. I'm just picking it up, putting it back on. Again, within a tenth. Now it's repeating every time. So about a tenth high. So there's zero. Off, back on. Zero. Get off, back on. Tenth. I mean, we're repeating within a tenth every time. So I will say that's that's a success. That's pretty good. Now there might be a few things that I tweak about this design, but I say as a prototype, this came out pretty well. I'm really pleased with how this is performing. I'm just doing this off and on, over and over. I don't even know how many times I've done this now. But that's, it's repeating within a tenth every time. Don't you just love it when something actually works out? So what do we do once we take this off? Like. I'm finished with it, I've touched all my tools, I want it out of my way. Well, that's where this third piece comes in. So this one is gonna be made to mount wherever you want to on the wall. We have to leave it inside the machine because this is a wired tool setter. So I'm gonna put this somewhere on this back wall here, somewhere like right there. Now you heard those magnets, now that is stout. That's why I put you this center hole here so we can pry that off when we want to. So I'm gonna put it somewhere like right there. So we're just gonna take our tool setter. Now we just set it right on. Now you can see it's not gonna slide because those magnets are so strong. One thing I know you're probably gonna say, well, what if it falls? Unless you have some catastrophic event, I don't think, I mean, that's, that's on there pretty stout. I don't think it's gonna fall. So the only thing we need to keep in mind of here is wherever we put this on the wall, we need to make sure that the cord doesn't interfere with the tool changer or the table when it's all the way over at its X axis limit. But I think that's a good spot for now. And man, this thing feels pretty solid. Like it's, it's not just gonna fall off there. So when I'm ready to use it, just pull it off, set it on the table. Just that simple. So the only thing left to do here is since I've got my indicator in the spindle, I'm gonna sweep the tool setter stylus here, find that zero, and then I can calibrate this at its new location. And we'll be ready to go. And by the way, if you guys enjoy the content that we're making, then consider becoming a member like Matt Ryan did. Because when you become a member, ultimately that helps produce content like this and fund free education. And if you don't, we appreciate you stopping by and watching our content anyway. So do me a favor and hit that like and subscribe button and leave me a comment if you think you would want one of these for your machine. We'll see y'all next time. I forgot that was up there. <laughs> It's okay. Nice.